we're just testing this out. We're just testing this out. Okay, so, um, a lot of people have, uh, you know, they've asked me questions in regards to what's going on with my dad, um, why I haven't really been on social media as much as I normally am, why I haven't posted videos. I mean, I have posted videos. I did the uh, moment to reflect. Oh, no, I didn't post that yet. Well, I did a moment to reflect that I'm going to post, and then I did a video that I want to, hopefully, somebody in Ellen's team will see. Um, just a little inside thing that uh, my dad and I had um, growing up, and I shared some insight on that as well. So if you have not seen that video, I will um, link it somewhere at some point in time, or you can just go on my last videos or whatnot but um so for those of you who don't know what's going on and, and all of that my father was diagnosed with lung cancer about well, what they thought was lung cancer about almost two months ago and um i didn't really know what to think i didn't really know what to expect i didn't really know what I didn't really know much about the situation, honestly. And the fact is, you hear that word, the C word, and you're like, Ugh. I mean, we've been down that road before, and it was just, it, it's just never an easy or. No illness is fun, so I'm not going to say a fun thing, but it's just really, really not a good time. And uh, usually when they find lung cancer, it's too late. So I was thankful that uh, they were able to catch it in time. And it wasn't um, a last minute thing where, you know, there was no chance. But when I tell you that there has been so many setbacks, so many turnarounds, so many, we think that we're going to get an answer or we think that this and we think that. And it just, it, something always, always, always pulls us back. And it's super annoying. And it's like, when are we ever going to have an answer? Like, they had to do, he had to go, because he, um, he was a sergeant in the Marines. So he was in the military. He goes to the VA. And we in Buffalo have an institute here called Roswell, which is one of the best cancer institutes in the United States. Amazing. Hands down there. The staff was amazing. The whole, just everything. We get there the day that he's supposed to have his biopsy. The VA didn't send over the disc that they needed to do the procedure because of where the cancer, or I'm going to use quotes, air quotes, the cancer is located. It's in the lower right lung um, towards like the belly button. Uh, well, towards the, the that area. And you can't really safely get to it because if you put a needle in and do a biopsy that way, there's a chance that you get, you know, poke a hole, uh, air comes out, liquid fills. It's just not good. It's not safe. The only other option was to do the microscopic or lith lithoscopic, however you want to call it. I forget how you call it. But in down through his throat, they put him out, put it down his throat, and then it basically uses like a GPS from this GPS imaging disc that had the CAT scan of where this tumor was while well, they didn't send it. Then they finally got it and it was not coded correctly. So we that, that was one setback. Couldn't get it done that day. Then we found out that his one kidney is only functioning at like 22 or 23 percent. The other one's at like 75 percent. Is creatine level? I believe that's what it is. It starts with the C. Could be wrong. So many different words and letters and and medical terms that have been thrown my way in the past couple of days, weeks, months. <laughs> um, but his levels are are kind of normal, a little bit high, but not too high. 
to be concerned, but his, with his kidneys functioning at that level, it's making his blood pressure extremely high. Plus he's stressed, I'm sure he has anxiety, I, I mean I'm terrified, I know he has to be. So that plays into a factor. So remember, first time biopsy couldn't do it. Then we find out the issues with his kidneys. Now he goes to have the biopsy again. We think, great, now we have about a week to wait, we'll find out. And there was two options, either he was going to have just chemo and radiation, or he was going to have surgery, then chemo and radiation. It depended on if it was small cell or non-small cell lung cancer. Well, they did the biopsy. We um, got the results back. It's not cancer. How? He did the PET scan, which was where they do radiation and sugar, basically. Went right to it. It's grown immensely just in the past month, two months. Um, he has lost weight. His sodium levels are down. It's just, it doesn't make sense. So then we find out that those biopsies are not always accurate. It's about 80 to 80% 80 accurate. Now in my head I was like, oh, 80%, that's huge. It's, he doesn't have cancer. That's like, that 80%, come on guys. Well, that 20% factor is, in the medical world, apparently like 100%. So, back to square one. Schedule the surgery. Well, guess what? We can't schedule the surgery because his blood pressure is so high that he's at a risk to be put under. This is all after meeting the anesthesiologists more than one time, the surgeons at both hospitals. So many doctor's appointments, so many visits, so many, so many things. And, uh, flash forward to this week, we met up with his surgeon and, uh, you know, I, we requested to, to meet up with her, and she uh, basically went over the scans again and, and showed us and basically said that, you know, your option and only option at this point, even though it came back non-cancerous, is to remove your lung. Which we had, we had known that that was one of the options, but we, we were just told that he didn't have it and there was an 80% that it was 80% accurate and dad had pneumonia like I'm not too sure how long ago maybe a couple of months ago and I was looking up cat scans online psychotic Virgo research 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 that's like all I do and um, the scans that I saw look a lot more identical if for lack of better words, but identical to what his lungs look like versus what lung cancer looks like. Cancer generally is like in a circle and it spreads in a circle and it doesn't spread the way my dad's is spreading. My dad's is very oddly shaped. It's not long, I don't really know how to describe it. Think of like, I, I don't really know. Like the old Nickelodeon logo, how it had like the splatty thing, I don't know, it's just, it just does not look like cancer. So I'm like, well obviously it's like pneumonia or something, something different. Well today, I met up with a pulmonary specialist. They reviewed his information and charts and everything and had no affiliation with the surgeon or any other doctor that he's seeing so there's no like oh well we're pushing for this or we're pushing for that it was a complete outsider's opinion looking in and he agrees that removing the lung is really the only option right now um and unfortunately we won't know if it is or is not cancer until the lung is already removed that is scheduled for Monday, pending 
tomorrow's visit whether or not his blood pressure and kidneys are under control. Um, recovery for this surgery is about six months. Um, there are a lot of risks. I'm not even going to discuss one of them because it's... <laughs> um, he'll have to be in the hospital for about two weeks. Um, then he come home. It's really important that he stays active and, and all of that. And uh, then we go from there. And I never thought I would say this, but hope that it was cancer that they removed. Because if they just removed a part of his lung for no reason. I'm, I mean, there's obviously something there. Some, t some type of growth. Or so it seems. But really though, what if it is a scar from pneumonia or bronchitis or infection or... I mean, they did... Um, a culture test and there was no infection his white blood cell counts normal so I mean I don't know I guess I'm just in denial but when you hear a surgeon say no you know the biopsy came back negative he doesn't have it I was so happy and then that's just not the case so Monday 6 a.m. surgery and then uh, we're gonna go from there I think that he'll pull through and everything will be fine I'm not worried about the surgery I'm worried about the recovery being in the hospital is never somebody's exciting you know highlight reel and uh, he's not really somebody who really wants to like, I don't know. We were all so set that he, he wasn't going to have to have the surgery. It was just going to be chemo and, and radiation. And that took a lot of preparing. It just seems like every time we, we, we have an answer and we know what's going on, we don't. Like the next day. Or even sometimes later that day. It's happened. So it's like, do we really think that, like, do we believe that this is really what's happening? He's having the surgery Monday pending the, you know, the, the appointment tomorrow? Or no? Or, like, what do we believe? What, what do we go by at this point? I'm just ready to have answers. And just be able to sleep. I'm so tired. I'm so scared and anxious. And I don't even know. So many things. And uh, I, just want, I just want answers. Ultimately. And I want my dad to be okay. So... If you could all please say some prayers that at the very least we have answers and that he is, is a healthy, he becomes as healthy as possible and lives a longer life. My dad's only 64, he's got life to live. And he just retired. Well, he retired because his job is shady. But a whole nother topic. It's not a time to hold grudges right now, Nathan. Okay. So, if you could please just say some prayers and I will keep you all informed in the meantime. On, you know, my social media and, and all of that. Whether it be uh snapchat or instagram or facebook or even here on youtube i'll i'll definitely keep you guys posted and uh like i said check out the video that i posted 
yesterday for Ellen. It's not really just for Ellen, but um, I'll give you a little bit of an insight. And I'm still working on a little documentary thing. I've been filming a little bit every day of, of this whole journey, just basically in, in hopes to like help somebody else who's going through what my dad's going through and what my family's going through. I've never had to go through anything like this before. Not to this severity and definitely not by myself. I'm very thankful that I have, you know, my family with me, but ultimately at the end of the day, um, I'm staying with dad and no one else is here. So it's a little bit challenging because I can't break down. I can't show emotion because I can't scare him. I don't, I don't, I don't want him to be nervous or more nervous than he already is. Like, whew. but on that note, I will promise to keep you guys informed and posted. I'm about to go shower and try to lay down. We have that appointment tomorrow. Let's keep our fingers crossed that he's able to have the surgery on Monday. Again, all pending on the test results tomorrow from his kidneys and his blood pressure and all of that. And then we're just going to go from there and uh, pray for the best. I know that God makes no mistakes and he has the final say. And my dad's very strong-willed and I think that he'll be just fine. But it doesn't hurt to pray. And it certainly doesn't hurt to uh, to keep somebody in you know your thoughts and prayers. So I appreciate you guys so much. And I hope to come back with really good news tomorrow. Either way, good news is that Dad's going on vacation, well, a little vacation. He's going camping Friday until Sunday. He really definitely deserves that. Just a little get, you know, break, get away. He calls it Camp Dude, which is really sad because you guys knew I had a dog. His name was Dude. He passed away, and that was like my dad's best friend. Um, so he's going camping like two and a half hours away. Which makes me a little nervous, but he's going to be with some good uh, friends of his, and uh, he has a cell phone now that works <laughs> reliably, and I can FaceTime him, so I know that everything will work out, but I just haven't been away from him like that since I got here, so it's a little nerve-wracking, but he deserves to have fun. Alright guys, I love you all. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you all soon. Okay, bye. And we're going to have the same problem again. I don't know how to stop the live stream. Sure don't.